poetry lovers. Sorry I haven't posted in a while. There's been school and work. So yeah, life has been sort of hectic. Anyways, please stay tuned for my uh, book review. I look forward to it and I hope you enjoy. What's up, you awesome blossoms? <laughs> yeah, it's not really spring, it's just I liked it because it rhymed. <laughs> Uh, today, we're going to be discussing Tom Young's collection called A Little Black Dress Called Madness, of which this is volume one, and this massive thing is volume two. <laughs> Please don't let what I say affect or uh, determine whether or not you read them. This is just my personal opinion. You may like it, even though I didn't, but uh, this is just my honest opinion on Tom Young's collection. I think what initially drew me to this book was um, the picture of the moon on the front. I am very moon oriented. I, I love writing poetry about the moon. I love looking at the moon. I love reading anything about the moon. And so I think that was initially what drew me to this book. Uh, I sort of went into these two blind. Obviously, I found this one first and uh, I loved it actually. I really liked it. There was a few things that, you know, I was a bit on the fence about, but on the whole, I really actually liked it. I liked the message and I liked what it had to say and I liked the way it said it or uh, the way he said it anyways. And so I figured, why not, you know, obviously there's a volume one, that means there's gonna be a volume two, and I was just ready to read volume two. Like, I think I said this in another video that when I received it, I was just like, I thought I ordered like a poetry book, not like magazine level poetry book, but I was like really intrigued by the size. I was wondering like, why was it so big? I've never seen a poetry book that big before. And so, I mean, that was like, I don't know if that was like red flag number one or whatever, but it was really interesting. So we're going to talk about volume one first, and then we'll get into volume two. The whole idea of a little black dress called madness, from what I gathered, is the author talks a lot about how life can be very mundane and how, in this case, it drives people mad. It makes them do really crazy stuff, which we get really into in uh, book two. And so I actually made a lot of notes. I don't know if you can see that. Made a lot of notes and um, there's a bunch of hearts, so that's a good thing. But I actually really resonated with a lot of the poetry in this. Um, and I really enjoy like how he managed to make the mundaneness of life poetic, but in like a disturbing way in a sense, if that, if that makes any sense. He manages to to bring some poetry into like the things in life that just seem really like everyday and like boring and and how sometimes that's okay but sometimes it feels like a cage. I really liked that. I'm gonna read you one actually because I think his poetry is just really interesting if if nothing else. This one is entitled number 28. It's really lovely. I have a heart by it and a bunch of underlining. She wanted to conquer the world but as the days passed things changed. First the wings, and then the broken halo, and finally the smile that could take you from the world. So, I think I think that sort of expresses a lot of the fears that people have, especially I know I have this fear of change, and how when things seem like you're just getting the hang of it, it's like life has a way of changing it, and then you have to adjust to a whole new mind frame or situation or way of life and sometimes it's very devastating and sometimes it, it can be a good thing even though it doesn't feel like it initially. That resonates with me because I'm so adverse to change it's almost ridiculous sometimes even though it may not come out that way. Inwardly I'm very adverse to change and I don't like it and so when I saw that I was like oh yeah you know that's true things that have changed in my life have taken away my smile or They've made me feel like I can't do anything with my life or made me feel like my wings have been clipped or my metaphorical wings have been clipped. And I really liked how he, he almost made it like, a, like, like this girl was a bird and life has sort of put her in a cage in a sense. And I know that's something I can definitely resonate with. Whether or not it's actually true, it's sometimes the way I do feel. So another one that I really liked was number 55. I remember I have the word amazing written beside it. And uh, I think I'm going to reread it to you guys to like figure out why I said that. So it says, they landed on the moon. At least they said they did. Old glory wrapped in another lie. 
As the animals lined up to cast the dice for the candidate of their choice, some with fake smiles and some with black hearts and some with both and blood stood in the corner with a Mona Lisa smile. I don't know what it means. I think that's a really cool thing about poetry is that somewhere, almost like subconsciously, I get it, but I can't explain what it means or what even what it means to me. I just get it. And I think that's almost the beauty of, of how poetry can work. You don't have to understand it, but you can get it and it feels right. Like it just sort of falls into place somewhere in here or up here and I really like that. There was like this feeling that you get when you read good poetry that it just, it's, um, it's unexplainable and undescribable, but it's there and it's real and it feels really good to read a bit of poetry that you can relate to even if you don't know how you relate to it. And I think that's incredibly mysterious and wonderful. So that's enough about the first book. I don't want to spoil too much of it for you, um, but I would definitely give the first book a read. I really liked the first book. This book, on the other hand, I'm sorry to say I did not finish it. There is language in both of these books, so if that is something that you are offended by or that you are, you know, not really a fan of, then I would suggest, especially for this one, don't read it. The first book, it's presented in a more artistic way, at least to me, and so I was able to handle it. I'm not a big fan of cursing, but I can totally understand it and deal with it if I find that there's a purpose in it. This book, on the other hand, I couldn't see the reason why, and it was very dark and at times very, very disturbing. And I was, I was getting freaked out by the things I was reading in this, and I couldn't understand why they were there. Like, I didn't have a clear, I didn't, I just, I, it just really kind of turned me off, to be honest. It was very graphic, and I didn't like it. That being said, there were some poems in here that I did like, and I think just from getting as far as I did, I think I got, a, I think I got more than halfway. Yeah, I definitely got more than halfway. I got about this, this far in it. Um, there was definitely poems I did like, but I, cr I really couldn't handle the level of graphic language and the things that they were describing. It was... I couldn't do it. <laughs> that being said, I don't want my opinion to discourage you from reading it because I don't, I feel like this is not for everybody and it definitely wasn't for me, but I think it would be for some people. I'm gonna go into a gist of what I got out of it because I did learn something. If, if, if nothing else, I learned something. So essentially it continues on with the previous volume about the mundaneness of life, but I think this one sort of goes more into the things that people can do because of how mad they get. There was a lot of killing in it. I'm going to say that right off. There was a lot of killing in it and like really weird killing. Killing in between relationships, there was talk of suicide or thinking of suicide because life got so boring or mundane or just like maddening. It's like people couldn't handle it anymore. And so there was a lot of, there was a lot of like dark, depressing kind of feelings about how, ugh, it's just, it's just too much. I, I, yeah, it's just not my thing. So a really interesting thing about this book, besides the size, is it's, it's almost like storytelling because there is this level of words in it. I'm not used to, I love long poetry. I don't, I, what I think I'm not used to is, is poetry that looks like this and is presented in like story, story version and then there's no sort of breaks in the, in the format of it and so it's just like one straight read like a novel. And I think that was another thing that was sort of hard for me to get through because I don't want to say that I think poetry should rhyme all the time. I really don't. And I think that poetry can, can come in any form. That being said, it's very hard for me to see it on paper in that novel form. Like, I feel like it's better if it's, like, <laughs> centered and sort of in shorter lines so that I can read it better and get a better hold on the rhythm. Because the story, it was it was very much like storytelling and I really couldn't, it didn't feel like poetry to me. And I feel really bad for saying that because I know this is somebody's work and they worked really hard on it and I feel really bad for saying that I don't feel like it was poetry because I'm sure it feels like poetry to him and that's that's great. It's just for me I didn't I didn't really enjoy it like I've enjoyed other 
the other books that I've talked about on this channel. There was one that I really liked and it's called Her Chaos. Um, I wrote like a long note beside it and I really liked it even though I didn't finish the book but um, I'm gonna read it to you so that maybe this will encourage you to actually read the book yourself. He loved her chaos because often it was when she was at her best. She always knew how to rise from the ashes. And I really liked that. I think that was, I thought that was beautiful. Um, he also has one about the moon on here. So I was just like, yes, the moon. I really, I would recommend the first one. I don't, I can't honestly recommend the second one, but please do read it if you feel like that's something that you could enjoy. I would definitely say go for it and uh, tell me what you think in the comments. So before you go, another really cool thing that I've done recently is I've started an Instagram slash bookstagram for my poetry channel. It's called, it's at the Poets Corner 46, so uh, pretty simple, pretty much like my uh, channel. And uh, I've been posting some of my own poetry on there and some poetry books and other things that I like about poetry as well. So please feel free to check it out. I think someone had mentioned that I should do that in the previous video and so I took them up on it and I hope I hope that you go on there and you um, you follow me because I'd love that um, please don't hesitate to leave comments like that I welcome any type of criticism so long as it's constructive I would love to hear from you guys so thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video